so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything that I loved that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you will receive me. And nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party in heaven has ever seen. I hope. So, this is Couples for Christ Christian Life Program. We'll be talking about God's love. God's love is amazing. And, you know, I, I'll probably be um, understating God's love in this talk, but to give justice to it. It says here that God loves creates. You know, in the beginning, there was nothing. There was only God. But because his God is his very nature, his very self, is love, he cannot contain himself just by himself. So what did he do? He created the heavens, he created the earth, he created the sun, the moon, the stars, and the sea. In the fifth day. And in the sixth day, uh, every day that he created from, from day one to day five, he saw his creation. No? And, and he said, it, it is good. But on the sixth day, he decided to create man and the woman. And he decided that he would create man and the woman out of his own image. And then once he created man and woman, you know what God said? It is very good. But he was so happy what he done when he created man and woman. Because first when he created, I, I noticed when I was reading this topic, he created the heavens and the earth, but he only said it was good. But when he created man and woman, he said it was very good. So that alone tells us that God has a special part in his heart for us. He loves us as his own. So God is a God who 
creates, his love creates. So, in the beginning there was no light, and he created light, and there was light. And he created the sea, he created the heavens and the earth, and then finally created man. God created man, his image, in the divine image, God created him. What better demonstration of God's love than being created in the image of the Creator? So God loves us that much that He molded us to His own image. Whether we 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 are we think that we, we don't look good or whether we think we look good, we are molded in God's image and likeness. Our soul reflects God's goodness. God created everything good, if you can remember, during the time of uh, Adam and Eve. Everything was there. No, they live in paradise. They don't have to work. They don't have to labor. They just have to pick what they want to eat. No, and it's there for them. God created everything good. Nothing God created is evil. Everything God created is good. That's why sometimes people will ask, why did God allow this to happen? Did God create that? Did God create war? Did God create famine? Did God want people to die? I don't think so. But He has a reason why he, he does that. You know, God loves us so much. He given us this gift. What's this gift? Free will. He loves us so much that He doesn't want to control us. He doesn't want us to be like His guinea pigs that do what He says. He loves us that much. That's why he given us the freedom to choose. But man, in the exercise of his God given gift of free will, what? Rejected his paper by sinning. By sinning. Sinning is not just going away from God. Sinning actually causes us damage more than anything else. It's like, there is a story, uh, uh, I've read it from the book of Max Lucado, and uh, in one of his books, uh, Heart Like Jesus, and in one of those topics, he mentioned that he was walking in the park one day with his daughter. His daughter was only about three years old, no. So obviously, if the, the, her daughter is very playful, and they would, she would go to the playground, and then when when they arrive at the playground in the park, there's a a sand pit that, that you know you can build sand castle and stuff like that. But instead of play just playing with the sand, her her Maxlocado's daughter was actually um, like. Uh, playing with the sand and even trying to uh, like play with it in his mouth and probably eating some sand as well along the way. So obviously Max Max saw that and tried to try to uh, clean clean up her daughter. You know that's the same way our God is. Our God loves us even though we have dirt on our face even though we sin, but He doesn't want us to stay in that state because He wants us to be better. He wants us to be clean. That's why when we sin, we don't not only go away from God, but we damage ourselves as well. Amen? So God is a God 
Immokrates. God's love forgives. No, he, he not only wants to share His love by creating us and creating heaven and earth so that we can enjoy His creation. No, uh, while I was, was, I was traveling from, from Northeast to, to here in Scotland, I, I was just, you know, I was just appreciating the, the, the beauty of, of His creation. No? And, you know, everything that He created is wonderful. And, you know, you cannot say that that's why He wants to share it. Because he, he's, His character is love. God is love. He invented love. If we, we think about some sort of love, you no, know, love came, came from God. That's why he, he shared, he wants to share his love. Because you cannot love if you do not share. You cannot love your, your, just by yourself. You no, know, that would be selfish. You know, because you only think about yourself. But if you really love, you will share that love to others. No. As I, 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 I have this like idea or the best thing to do in your life, what is, what is it? To love, isn't it? The best thing to do in life is to love. What, what, what is one of the best ways to show love is what? to give time. No. Because time is spent, you won't be able to get it back. And when is the best time to do it? Now. Don't wait till it's too late to love. Don't wait because it might be too late. <laughs> no? So, love, love is, is, is the best thing to do in life. And that, that's what our God is. God is basically love himself. And we just talked about God Love creates. He created everything, everything good. And and now we, we say that God's love forgives. The parable of the prodigal son, of which the central figure is the father, is a graphic story of God's love. A God who is passionately in love with all his children. The prodigal son is uh, actually they, they named it wrong. No? It should be called the prodigal son. It should be called the father and his two sons. No? The main character here is the father. It's not the two sons. It's the father. It's the father who loves his son so much. No? He has one son who who. God is in everyone's early because he wants to, to, to spend his inheritance already. You know, in, in Jewish practice, in, in, the, in the old tradition, if, you get, if your, your parents die, that's the time that you get your inheritance. So, by getting the, the son's inheritance, even if his father alive, it's like it's like telling his father, I consider you dead. So give me my inheritance. That's what the son first son did. Where he where he lived the life of uh, life of you know, spent and vices, went to far places.
and he, he was preparing a three parts in his speech. No? The first one was he was going to say, Father, I'm sorry for what I've done. So that was the first part. The second part, he was going to say, he, he already prepared this in his mind before he, he was going to come back to his father. The second part is, um, I no longer deserve to be your son. No? That's the second part. And the third one is, treat me as your, one of your slaves. You know, he, um, he, he thought, if he is with his father, even even the, his servants, he will be happy the way his father treats his servants compared to what he's gone through. So he realized that and went back to his father. But you know, when, when he was coming back home, he was actually still far, far away. He was far, far away. But for some reason, his father caught sight of him straight away. I don't know, it might be coincidence that he was out there and was, he, was, he was already near, uh, viewing his son. But it might be because he has been longing to see his son ever since he, he went away. That every night he will try to glimpse of his son that he might come, come back. Every morning, he might be looking outside just to see if his son decides to come back. So he never, he never lost hope that his son will come back. That's why his son was still far away. He, was, he saw him straight away. Because what we think is he never stopped. If he never stopped hoping, good things happen. Good things happen. And the Father is like that. God the Father is now yeah. like that. No matter what we've done, okay. He loves us. He loves us. He's just waiting for us to come back. Amen? He's just waiting for us to come back. I, I have a, a, a story uh, of... Uh, this, this story that was written by uh, uh, what's his name again? Uh, he's a well-known writer, Christian writer, and Skatha, Skatha, and uh, it is a true story. This one, there, there was a priest that uh, or, or a seminarian that is about to be ordained. And his superiors told him that upon your ordination, I have a, a very good surprise for you. Actually, it's not a surprise anymore because I told him that when you're going to be ordained, you'll be meeting the Pope. The Pope, the Pope will be blessing you when you're ordained. Uh, sister knows this about this story. Uh, I think Sister Val shared this to us in one of our household. And I, I just want to share it to you. Anyway, so the, the, the seminarian was so happy to hear about that news that when the ordination day will come, that the Pope will be there to bless them. So they will be going to, 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 to the Vatican. So during that time, uh, when they went to the Vatican, he, he noticed some beggars on the street or begging. And he, he noticed one of them look familiar. And he was trying to stare at him like he, he knew him. And the, the, the beggar was looking at him as well. And the beggar actually when he saw the seminarian, he recognized him as well. So they both know each other. And the, the seminarian said, aren't you the one with, in the seminar before? You would meet with us in the seminar before? And you, you were a priest? The beggar said, yes. Oh, why? What happened? And so uh, I, the, the, 
that the bigger said, I've done so many wrong things in my life. The first one, the first biggest mistake was coming out of the priesthood. And here I am begging. He was so he was so disheartened when he saw his friends and Elaria begging. And but it was nearing the, his ordination day, so they have to attend the, his ordination. So come this ordination day, so we have to uh, leave his friend for a while and, and go to that uh, ordination. So you know when you meet the Pope, you, you don't you don't just converse with the Pope. No, you, you have to have a little appointment or you have to have. So they were instructed to just ask for a blessing and that's it. And the Pope will give them a blessing and that's it. But when this time came to to ask for the Pope's blessing upon his ordination, he couldn't he couldn't uh, control himself. He, he, he burst it out and, and he told the Pope, you know, Pope, can we pray for my friend Seminaria? He used to be a priest but now he's back outside the Vatican. So, and, and of course the the security of the Pope rushed to him and grabbed him because he's not supposed to just uh, make informal conversation with the Pope just like that because the Pope has a lot of things to do and a lot of people to talk and a lot of people to meet, you know. His time is actually, you know, scheduled, you know. But I think the Pope heard what he said and a few days after that, he had a call from the secretary of the Pope telling him that the Pope wants to have dinner with him and the baby. So, I couldn't believe So they went, oh, we have to, to dress up, uh, I have some clothes here in the barrel, so you can look more exactly that. And probably dressed up for the accommodation where it is. And then they went for the dinner, of course he had a bath. They had a bath. And then they, they went for the dinner, but as they were serving the dessert, the, the secretary instructed the, the newly ordained priest that they would have to leave and let the beggar priest, who used to be an ex, ex priest, and just the Pope. You know what the Pope did? He, he talked to the beggar and, and, then, and then he asked the beggar, What happened? Oh, and then the beggar started to, to, you know, it's like he was confessing everything to the to the Pope. And the Pope was so so uh, merciful and, and he, he did forgive him. Of, of course of course he forgave the, the priest and he even told the 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 beggar, the ex, ex priest that I have the authority uh, being the bishop of the Vatican to engage the philosophy priest. And he was so overwhelmed. And you know what the Pope did after that? Now, can, can you hear my confession? The Pope even asked her uh, to confess on the newly ordained priest that he just ordained just right there. And then. You know, our, the love of God is similar to that. No matter how, how long we've done in the past, he's Maybe he's waiting at just outside, looking at the window or looking in his in his in the field, waiting for us to come down. He's just waiting. He's just waiting to to have us put on the best robe as a sign that we are cherished, as a sign that we are loved put on a ring on our finger as a sign of our sonhood that we are his children. Put on sandals that we are not his servants. That we treat God treat us as his children. 
But then the older brother, the, the, the other part, the other brother, was, was, he was a good man. He, he served his father all his life. But he, he, he was jealous of the treatment of his father to his younger brother. Because he don't, doesn't normally feed the, the best calf, no, whenever. But here his brother spends all his belongings and come back and his father gives a party to him. And he was jealous about that. He was jealous. But you know what the father said to the, to the older brother? Sometimes we think we are good, but sometimes we are not treated right. Sometimes we are, think that we are, we are not justified. But our God is not like that. Our God forgives. Sometimes you don't realize how, how, how very merciful our Father is. This, the, the story of the father and the two sons tells us about all of us, our lives. Some of us are the first brother. Some of us might be, you know, not very good and trying to, try to be happy or lucky. While some of us might be very good. But sometimes, because of our pride, because we think of ourselves too much, that's why we get jealous easily. But the good thing is, our Father, Father's love forgives. Amen? Our Father loves forgives. Our Father in heaven patiently waits for us to come back. What awaits us? is a lavish and generous love, a father ready to forgive his children's sins, despite his children's past. You know, uh, I was going to share this last one, but I want to share it to you now. My father, uh, I grew up with my father being an alcoholic was, as I was growing up as a little child. And he was an alcoholic, there was one time that uh, I can remember as far as when we were very young, we were going outside of the house, running away with my mom and my sister. My brother was not born then yet. And I think my dad was throwing stones at us. I think I was just five or five or six years old. As far as I can remember. So it's kind of hard to understand God's love. And, but my father was a good father. Actually, uh, last, last, his last birthday, last February, I called him and greeted him. And he was, he was very kind. I know he was very young because his voice was, you know, <coughs> like, you were, you are so good, son. You, you, you never gave me a name. I'm so happy to have you, he said to me. And it was a bit hard for me to realize this, this kind of love. Because so 
humility about it. And we would approach person that we know that we want to confide, you know, that whatever we say to him, he will accept us for who we are. We think our God is, is not more merciful than that person. Do you think your friend is more merciful than God? Brothers and sisters, God, the reason why we, we have so much, um, why, why, why does God, why does the Bible says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your soul? Why does the Bible say that? If you love your mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. Why? Sometimes I think, why? Especially if you don't know God that much. But if, if you know God, God could give you what your parents or your brothers and sisters could not give you. More than anything that you can ever imagine. And He the happiness, the joy that God can give. Nobody can ever replace that. No. He gave His only begotten Son to us. He gave His Son to us. And I mean, I'm just, I'm just so proud to be serving a God who would do that for me. You know, all, all people no matter who you are, your soul craves for love. That's how God created us. And we, if we don't feel that void of love in our hearts, we will look elsewhere. We will look for vices <coughs> to supplement that love. They, they're called by Paul Sanchez, he is a well known preacher in the Philippines. They're called Pineated love. Because we couldn't find it elsewhere. But have we tried God? God's love. Have we tried it? You might have done, done it, you might have tried it, but I'm so happy that you are here because you are taking that bold step toward knowing more God's love. Amen? Amen. So God love creates, God God's love forgives, and God love God's love what? Believes. God loves believes. The fullest revelation of God's love is the giving of his only begotten Son to suffer and die that we may have eternal life. God's love is, most of all, love that redeems. God's love redeems. When we fall, He makes us, when, when we ask for forgiveness, he, he, he erases everything as if nothing happens. How liberating is that? Especially me, when I was growing old, probably because I had a Seen that in my father, you know, uh, I became a naughty boy, I became uh, engrossed with uh, pornography you know, for many, many years. And upon knowing that God loves me no matter what, really freed me from the bondage of sin. I am still prone to sin, don't get me wrong, but I'm no longer a slave of it. Amen? Because I experience God's love in my life. I experience His amazing love that no matter how dirty you are, no matter how dark your past is, my love for you is more than that. It's more than we love ourselves. It's more than we love ourselves. God loves us more than we actually love ourselves. 
Bibigyan mo sila ng opinion. More is God's love redeems. God loves, helps us to be a better person. God loves, helps us to, to be able to stand up, rise up from, from where we fell off, and become better. You know, that's why we're here. Not because we are growing, we are, we are uh, sinners, but because, yeah, we, we are sinners. But because we want to be more than him. It says in the Bible that be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. God wants us to be like him. That's why he created us in his own image. That's why he wants to lavish us with his love. You know, from time of Adam and Eve, they 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 are our, our parents, our forefathers. They rejected God by sinning. But He did not give up on them. No. Uh, when, when they went out of the Garden of Eden, God still, still allowed them to wear clothing so they won't be naked. And their offspring, Cain and Abel. You know, Cain and Abel. Um, Cain killed his brother Abel because of jealousy. But, you know, God was still merciful to Cain and protected him from being killed on his on side. That's how merciful our God is. Even to, to the time of Noah, when, when so many so many sins, so many wrongdoings have happened in the time of Noah, he said, get all your family because his family was a righteous family. And get all the birds, you know, what you can save. And because he still loved mankind, he doesn't want to destroy them. Even the time of Abraham, he made a covenant with Abraham that because of your love for me, you know, remember Abraham when he, when he offered his son to God, when God asked for his son. And he obeyed God, regardless of his love for his son Isaac. So God made a covenant to Abraham that I will make you father of many nations, as, as, as many as the stars in the sky. No, he didn't give up on us. And even during the time of Isaac, Jacob, the time of Moses, he, he, he he liberated the Israelites. He helped Moses to, to liberate the Israelites.